I've spent hundreds of hours trying to learn new skills. Almost inevitably, I encounter advice like this. Just start. While it may hold some truth, in my opinion, it's some of the most frustrating advice to encounter. Just start. Or more commonly, I simply have no idea where to start. I wanted to see what the experts do. What's their approach when learning a new skill from scratch? What does just starting look like for them? Five days to train. I am getting a little beaten up. So whether you're trying to learn Spanish like me or learning to start a business you know absolutely nothing about, this video will give you the tools to excel in the most difficult part of the process, starting. Let's begin by looking at one of the fastest learners in the world. A lot of you, I assume, all know who he is. Mental and physical and spiritual strength. The New York Times best-selling author multiple times over. One of the most celebrated and decorated successful digital creators of our time. The human guinea pig himself, Tim Ferriss. I've been closely watching Tim Ferriss for a little over a year now and one of the things that I've noticed is how strategic he is with starting. He has a very systematic approach <laughs> to learning that I'll show you in just a second but first I want to illustrate how most people go about learning a new skill from scratch. Let's say this is Spanish and I'm trying to learn it. My goal is to get through this wall, past the roadblocks and challenges until I arrive at the center circle, which let's say is Spanish fluency. The way I used to go about this and the way most people still go about this is by attacking this problem or this skill from all kinds of different directions and bouncing along these challenges until one of three things happens. Either try lots and lots and lots of different kinds of strategies and attack from many different angles hoping that one of them works, try one or two strategies over a long period of time hoping for a breakthrough, or just give up. But here's what gets interesting because this isn't what Tim Ferriss does. When learning something new, he has a system that puts himself in the best possible position for success. And it works. Let's have a look at his system and how we can replicate it so that we can learn almost anything in a very short amount of time. Okay, is this thing on? Oh, yep, <laughs> sure is. Okay, so really quickly, just need to let you guys know that I did not get a video sponsor for this video, which is awesome because that means I get to spend more time making a cool video for you guys, which I love doing. What's not awesome is the fact that my bank account doesn't really like do anything when I don't have a video sponsor. Um, so if you wanna help support this channel and learn a cool new skill in the process and save money, a great way to do that would be through Skillshare, which is linked down in the description. Because it's the link that Skillshare gave me, you'll get a huge discount and unlimited access to all of their classes for like $9 a month. It's really absurdly awesome. Um, not to mention you can watch some of my classes if you want anything from like speed reading to building a second brain. So at the end of this video, if you're like, hey, I wanna learn a cool new skill like we're talking about, that would be a great place to go and do it. Doesn't have to be one of my classes, but yeah, just want to throw that out there. All right, cool, back to the video. I'm Tim Ferriss, best-selling author and human guinea pig. The first part of the four-step process that Tim uses is illustrated here. It's called deconstruction, and just like in real life, it can get kind of messy sometimes. Deconstruction is the process of taking something very, very large and breaking it down into smaller pieces. This also includes identifying where you might fail or you have failed in the past before you even start. It's looking at the question, what are common mistakes that you or other people have made. This picture here is him deconstructing three languages that he's learning. This is something that can be done with anything from budgeting to learning a backflip to success on YouTube. And it's something that I did not do the first time I tried to learn Spanish, which meant that now that I'm actually learning it, I have to go back and unlearn all of the things that I learned incorrectly, which is a huge waste of time and is very, very frustrating. Now you may be wondering, okay, how do I deconstruct something? <laughs> um, thankfully, most research that you find is dedicated to this, is breaking things down, uh, breaking skills down and, and deconstructing it. So you can find a lot of, of information on the internet, but my personal process, uh, and Tim would, would say this as well, is to go to someone uh, who is a master in their field. And then what you do is you study their process profusely. If it's someone that will mentor you, then by all means, do that. That's by, by far the best option here. But if they won't, there's oftentimes a lot of information on the internet as to how they started and what their process is now, and really dig into that. And for those of you that are learning languages right now, Tim Ferriss 
has some phenomenal resources on how to do this with a language. You can completely deconstruct and select, in effect, the grammar of a given language in one to two hours. He's done a lot of the work for you. So I'll put some, some references down uh, in the description that have helped me a lot and I think they could help you as well. Now that you've deconstructed the skill that you're trying to learn, it's time for selection, which is where we pick the most important aspects of the skill that we're trying to learn. Hi, you've been entered into a jujitsu tournament in seven days, and all you have to do is beat two opponents and you'll win $300,000. Yeah, one small problem with that. <laughs> I don't know any jujitsu. Ah, you'll figure something out. Oh, and it'll be aired live so that everybody can watch. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, cool, yep. See ya. Okay, so let's assume that I accept, duh, and that I have the best trainer in the world at my disposal. Now, right here, what would most people do? Most people would try to learn as many moves and counter moves and strategies as possible in those seven days. They would cram it full. It's better than nothing, but it's still not the best option. Believe it or not, Tim Ferriss actually put himself in this situation, except for he had five days <laughs> to train before the tournament instead of seven. And what he did, to, to train and learn during that time was absolutely fascinating and it illustrates a fantastic point. What he did is he only learned one move. It was a chokehold called the, the, the guillotine chokehold. So it's like, why would you only learn one skill in this entire sport? <laughs> so here's the thing, this chokehold is one of the most powerful and most used chokeholds, if I understand correctly, in the sport of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's basically game over. If you get someone in this chokehold, next to impossible to escape or to get out of it. So what he did is he identified that this was one of the most important moves in jujitsu. And he spent all of his time mastering this one move from every possible situation or position on the mat that he could possibly get into. Which meant that when it actually came time to compete, he actually didn't do horribly, which is kind of surprising, no offense. I'm built like a monkey, look at me. So if I can do it, I think you guys could probably do very much the same. And this illustrates how you can identify the most important part to dedicate your time to and how it can create huge benefits. You may have heard this called the 80-20 rule, which says that if you pick the 20% of a skill or language or whatever it is correctly, that 20% can be used 80% of the time. And this is how you can learn Spanish or any other language incredibly fast, because if you just start randomly learning words, you'll be there a while. Like it, it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> but here's the thing, if you pick the right words, the right 1000 to 1200 of the most commonly used words, you can become conversational incredibly fast. Like look it up, there's studies on this as far as like English and other languages of like what are the most common words used and it turns out like 60 50 to 60 percent of our day we use the exact same words and this is why deconstruction is so important before you move into the 80 20 rule or, or selection all right let's move on to the next one so a while ago true story by the way i had my friends over and we decided to bake a cake i know it's kind of a random thing for like six dudes to do but we decided to do it Long story short, I kind of did some of the ingredients and in like the order of operations. It, it kind of got mixed up and I kind of did some of the stuff backwards. So you can imagine how the cake turned out. It actually turned out perfectly fine. It didn't affect anything. But most of the time <laughs> when you mess up the order of a recipe, you do it backwards, for example, you will get a very different outcome than doing it forwards. But here's the thing, when it comes to learning a skill, Sometimes changing the sequence can have a profound advantage. What is sequencing? Sequencing is the order you go about learning and applying these skills. It's all about asking questions and seeing if breaking outside of the normal mold will help you in the process of learning. Let's take chess for example. Tim Ferriss talks about one of his friends, kind of a chess prodigy that is very, very successful in the world of chess. But what's interesting is 
his friend learned chess backwards. Instead of learning opening moves in the beginning of the game, like everybody else was, he started at the very end of the game and learned how to finish the game and end the game and learned from the end of the game to the beginning of the game. Doing things in reverse actually can be extremely beneficial. And because of this, you can imagine, he developed a view of chess that was very different than his opponents and it gave him a distinct advantage because many, many times the normal way to learn something isn't actually the fastest. Look at people that are learning skills two or three times faster than everyone else and see what they're doing differently. What questions are they asking themselves? And you may have already picked this up, but this is exactly what we're doing with Tim Ferriss. We're, we're literally using his formula to learn about him. We're deconstructing his methods. We're selecting what is most important, which he's already done most of the work for us. We're sequencing his actions and the process that he goes about learning things, like if you take languages, for example. From all of that, we now move into the last part, which is steaks. Not like cow steaks, but like, you know, steaks. Like, what are you gonna lose? I'm a firm believer that when people say I can't change, it's because it doesn't hurt enough to stay where you're at. Take sugar, for example. Now there is an amazing new sugar discovery, Sugar Cane 99. If you've ever tried to quit sugar, um, it sucks. It's like one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever been through. It's right up there with quitting ca caffeine. You can check the video out here. We're talking like almost went blind in my one eye. Really, really sketchy stuff. So here's the question. If you lost a dollar for every gram of sugar that you ate, do you think you would have a hard time stopping? I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, like, that's a huge incentive. Got sugar, all right. I mean, a latte at Starbucks would be like 50 bucks. But this brings out a really important final point, which is what are the stakes? What are you willing to put on the line? What are you willing to lose? to learn this skill. You have to put pressure on yourself and make it painful for you not to follow through. And preferably this would come from an external source outside of yourself. That way it doesn't take willpower on your side every time. Tim Ferriss did this with his jujitsu experiment. <laughs> you know, signed up for a tournament, five days from now, I know nothing about jujitsu, bang. Like you don't show up and train, that's pain. <laughs> for me, I do this by hiring a Spanish tutor twice a week and the entire conversation is in Spanish. So if I start skipping days and missing my study periods, uh, it hurts. <laughs> Lo siento, no estudié. And we've covered this several times on the channel before. It's not a new concept. It's called a commitment device. If you're interested in that and you wanna check it out later, I'll link a video up here that describes it completely. And if you can't think of anything to like push yourself, um, money is like an incredible motivator. More specifically, the loss of money. So like, you know, if you don't study twice a week, you donate $5 to me, like, no? Okay, now we have a framework to just start almost anything. Personally, I would recommend learning how to build a second brain. If you watch this video here, I actually do all of the deconstruction for you. This is by far one of the most useful skills I have ever learned.